Hey everyone. Back in my early software days, I was wrestling with EJBs or Enterprise Java Beans and feeling drained by all the heavy boilerplate code. Then I discovered Spring and it was like a breath of fresh air. Ever since I have been a huge fan and in this video I'll share why Spring has been my go-to framework and show you how it simplifies Java development so you can focus on building great applications without getting stuck in the weeds. Ready to see what makes Spring such a game changer? Let's get started. One of the coolest things about Spring is how it takes care of all the heavy lifting behind the scenes. Think server setups, bean creation, and wiring your components together so you can focus on building features that matter. Let me break it down with a simple example. Suppose you have a greeting service class that returns a friendly message. In plain Java, you'd usually create a new greeting service each time you need it. And that can get messy as your project grows. But with Spring, you mark your class with an annotation like add service and let the framework automatically create and manage it for you. Then anywhere you want to use that greeting, Spring simply injects it. So you don't have to keep writing new all over the place. Annotations here are like the special markers we put on our code, like add service, to give instructions to the Spring framework. In this case, add service tells Spring, this class is doing service related tasks. So please manage and create it automatically. Spring then takes care of creating an instance of that class for you. So you don't have to write extra code. This approach is called dependency injection. It keeps your code super clean and modular because all those behind the scenes details like how objects are created are handled by Spring. You end up with a setup that's easier to maintain and test without you having to worry about too much configuration or boilerplate. Essentially, Spring says, hey, let me deal with that infrastructure stuff so you can focus on writing the fun parts of your application. And that's why it's so popular among Java developers. Imagine you have a growing application where multiple classes need to greet users. Perhaps you have a user profile manager class that needs to greet new users, a marketing email sender class that personalizes email subject lines, and a customer support class that automatically sends welcome messages. If you are doing this in plain Java without Spring, you might end up with something like this. At a first glance, it might not seem too bad, but notice a few issues starting to creep in. Repetition of new greeting service in each of the class. Each class here creates its own instance of greeting service. So if you decide to change how greeting service is instantiated, like maybe it requires additional parameters, every single class using new greeting service has to be updated. Each class is also tightly coupled to greeting service directly. So if you wanted to swap out greeting service for a more advanced version, perhaps one that pulls data from a database or has different greeting format, you would now have to change the code in each class. This is not very flexible. And the more classes you add, the more greeting service instantiation you'll have scattered throughout your code. And as your application grows, this becomes harder to keep track of. Spring solves these problems by managing the creation of your greeting service bean. You simply declare it once, and then you use Spring to inject it wherever it's needed. No more hunting down all those new calls if something changes. As a result, it's more flexible, more testable, and overall a cleaner way to structure your code. In the old days, you had to create objects yourself by calling new my class, and then pass them around to different parts of your code like we just saw. Inversion of control flips that responsibility. Instead of your code controlling the flow, Spring's container test does it. You basically say, Hey Spring, I will give you all the info about my classes and how they relate to each other. You figure out how to create them and when to plug them in. That's the inversion. Your application is now letting Spring orchestrate how everything is built and connected. Dependency injection is how Spring actually accomplishes IOC. And this is in fact one of my favorite interview questions to all the new beginners. Here, you don't directly construct or manage dependencies like our greeting service example. Instead, you declare them in your class, often via annotations. And Spring automatically injects the right instance at the right time. This way, your classes don't care how or when they get their dependencies. 
they just know that those objects will be there and ready to use. It's clean, modular, and removes a ton of boilerplate. So the main takeaway is that IOC and DI let you focus on the actual business logic, while Spring takes care of gluing everything together behind the scene. It's a huge time saver once you get the hang of it. Now, Spring Boot is like the fast track ticket to building Spring application. Traditionally, setting up a Spring project meant juggling multiple XML files or heavy configurations. Spring Boot changes the game by offering auto configuration. It scans your class path and automatically sets up common features like database connections or web servers based on what it finds. If you have got a JDBC driver, it will configure your data source. If you have the Spring Web dependency, it sets up a default Tomcat or Jetty server. This means you spend way less time writing boilerplate. Spring Boot also bundles an embedded server. By default, that's Tomcat. So you can run your whole app just by calling main. No more deploying war files to an external server each time. You can also create a brand new project by using Spring Initializer. Add a few dependencies, generate the project, and boom, you have got a working application in minutes. It's perfect for rapid prototyping because you can see changes almost immediately without wrestling with complex configurations. And here is a quick example of how minimal your main class can be. Now Spring relies heavily on annotations, which not only reduce XML clutter we used to see in the past, but also make your code more expressive. Add Spring Boot application is basically a combo of add configuration, add enable auto configuration, and add component scan. It tells Spring Boot, hey, this is my main application class. Go ahead and wire it up with everything. Add component marks a generic bean for Spring to manage. So if you have a class that doesn't neatly fit into a service or controller category, you can use add component. Add service is like component, but semantically indicates you're writing business logic here. So your code is more readable. Add repository is used for data access layers. It also handles exceptions related to database operations in a more spring friendly manner, turning them into springs data access exception. Add controller and add rest controller are for web controllers in spring MVC. Add controller typically returns a view such as HTML, JSP, or time leaf template, etc. While a REST controller returns JSON or other data directly in HTTP responses. Basically, these annotations make it super clear where your code belongs and how Spring should handle it. No need for big, complicated XML files. Spring MVC is all about creating web apps or REST APIs with minimal hassle. Add controller is often used when you want to serve up HTML views or template-based responses. Add REST controller is a shorthand for controller and response body, meaning it will return data like JSON directly rather than rendering a view. Add request mapping and friends like add get mapping, add post mapping help map URLs to your controller methods. For example, something like this. And if you are building a traditional web app, you could have something like this in add controller. With that approach, Spring uses an HTML template like Timeleaf, JSP, or FreeMarker to render a dynamic page. Using Spring MVC means you can whip out RESTful APIs or full-blown web apps quickly. The annotations make it crystal clear what each piece of your application is supposed to do, reducing confusion and cutting out a lot of the wiring you would normally handle manually. Spring MVC is the part of the Spring ecosystem that helps you build web applications following the MVC or the model view controller pattern, mapping URLs to controllers, handling requests, and returning views or JSON responses. Spring Boot, on the other hand, is a toolkit that makes starting and configuring your Spring projects incredibly easy. It bundles an embedded server, applies auto configuration to cut out your boilerplate code, and allows you to run your app just by calling main. Essentially, you can use Spring MVC with or without Spring Boot. But when you combine the two, you get a streamlined, ready-to-run web framework. No additional server setup or hefty XML config required. And that's how Spring Boot and Spring MVC help you hit the ground running, cutting out the busy work so you can focus on writing code that matters. All right, we have covered a solid chunk of Spring fundamentals. How it simplifies Java development, dependency injection, Spring Boot, annotations, and even building web applications with Spring MVC. 
But trust me, this is just the tip of the iceberg. There is so much more, like the Spring Bean lifecycle, AOP or aspect-oriented programming, Spring JDBC for database access, and of course, Spring Security to lock things down. I'll be making dedicated videos on each of these topics, so stay tuned. And if there is a specific Spring concept you want me to cover next, drop it in the comments. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that bell icon so you don't miss out. See you in the next one.